why would he do that? Is that fair? This is the LifeSpring Family Audio Bible coming to you from Riverside, California and podcasting since 2004. I'm your OG Godcaster, Steve Webb. This is the daily podcast where we'll read through the entire Bible in a year. The website is lifespringmedia.com. Since there might be some new folks around and it's been quite a while since I explained why and how we're reading through the Bible, I think now might be a good time to quickly do that. This will only take about 30 seconds. Now, as you may know, the Bible can be divided into sections. The way we divide it, and we'll thus read it, is this. On Sundays, we'll read from the Epistles. On Mondays, we'll read from the Law. Tuesdays will be History. Wednesday will be Psalms. Thursday, Poetry. Friday, Prophecy. Saturday, the Gospels. I like this schedule because every week we'll have an opportunity to read from each section of the Bible without getting bogged down in some of the, shall we say, drier parts. When you read, say, from the front of the Bible to the back, from Genesis to Revelation, in other words, it's a very long time before you get into the New Testament. And as a Christian, I love reading the New Testament, and I don't want to wait until I'm nine or ten months into the reading to read about Jesus. So, I hope you enjoy this schedule as much as I do. I found this Bible reading schedule a few years ago at BibleReading.com, and Michael Coley, who owns that website, graciously gave his permission for me to use the schedule here on the show. So, this is The Law Monday. We'll read Genesis 24 through 27, and I'm calling today's episode The Trickster. And as always, after the reading, I'll have some comments for you. Before we read, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, and I pray, God, that you would teach us today as we read. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's begin. Genesis chapter 24. As the days went by, and Abraham became older, the Lord blessed Abraham in every way. Abraham said to the oldest servant of his household, who was in charge of everything he owned, Put your hand under my thigh. By the Lord, God of heaven and earth, give me your word that you won't choose a wife for my son from the Canaanite women among whom I live. Go to my land and my family, and find a wife for my son Isaac there. The servant said to him, What if the woman doesn't agree to come back with me to this land? Shouldn't I take your son back to the land you left? Abraham said to him, Be sure you don't take my son back there. The Lord, God of heaven, who took me from my father's household and from my family's land, who spoke with me and who gave me his word, saying, I will give this land to your descendants, he will send his messenger in front of you, and you will find a wife for my son there. If the woman won't agree to come back with you, you'll be free from this obligation to me. Only don't take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under his master Abraham's thigh and gave him his word about this mission. The servant took ten of his master's camels and all of his master's best provisions, set out, and traveled to Nahor city in Aram Naharaim. He had the camels kneel down outside the city at the well in the evening, when the women came out to draw water. He said, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make something good happen for me today and be loyal to my master Abraham. I will stand here by the spring while the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. When I say to a young woman, Hand me your water jar so I can drink, and she says to me, Drink, and I will give your camels water too, may she be the one you've selected for your servant Isaac. In this way, I will know that you've been loyal to my master." Even before he finished speaking, Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, was coming out with a water jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very beautiful, old enough to be married, and hadn't known a man intimately. She went down to the spring, filled her water jar, and came back up. The servant ran to meet her and said, Give me a little sip of water from your jar. She said, Drink, sir. Then she quickly lowered the water jar with her hands and gave him some water to drink. When she finished giving him a drink, she said, I'll draw some water for your camels, too, till they've had enough to drink. She emptied her water jar quickly into the watering trough, ran to the well again to draw water, and drew water for all of his camels. The man stood gazing at her, wondering silently if the Lord had made his trip successful or not. As soon as the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold ring weighing half a shekel, and two gold bracelets for her arms, weighing ten shekels. He said, Please tell me whose daughter you are, 
Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She responded, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, who is the son of Milcah and Nahor. She continued, We have plenty of straw and feed for the camels and a place to spend the night. The man bowed down and praised the Lord. Bless the Lord, God of my master Abraham, who hasn't given up his loyalty and his faithfulness to my master. The Lord has shown me the way to the household of my master's brother. The young woman ran and told her mother's household everything that had happened. Rebekah had a brother named Laban, and Laban ran to the man outside by the spring. When he had seen the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, and when he had heard his sister Rebekah say, This is what the man said to me, he went to the man who was still standing by the spring with his camels. Laban said, Come in, favored one of the Lord. Why are you still standing outside? I've prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man entered the house. Then Laban unbridled the camels, provided straw and feed for them, and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men with him, and set out a meal for him. But the man said, I won't eat until I've said something. Laban replied, Say it. The man said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has richly blessed my master, and has made him a great man, and has given him flocks, cattle, silver, gold, men servants, women servants, camels, and donkeys. My master's wife Sarah gave birth to a son for my master in her old age, and he's given him everything he owns. My master made me give him my word, don't choose a wife for my son from the Canaanite women, in whose land I am living. No, instead go to my father's household and to my relatives and choose a wife for my son. I said to my master, What if the woman won't come back with me? He said to me, The Lord, whom I have traveled with everywhere, will send his messenger with you and make your trip successful, and you will choose a wife for my son from my relatives and from my father's household. If you go to my relatives, you will be free from your obligation to me. Even if they provide no one for you, you will be free from your obligation to me. Today I arrived at the spring, and I said, Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you wish to make the trip I'm taking successful, when I'm standing by the spring and the young woman who comes out to draw water, and to whom I say, Please give me a little drink of water from your jar, and she responds to me, Drink, and I will draw water for your camels too, may she be the woman the Lord has selected for my master's son. Before I finished saying this to myself, Rebekah came out with her water jar on her shoulder and went down to the spring to draw water. And I said to her, Please give me something to drink. She immediately lowered her water jar and said, Drink, and I will give your camels something to drink too. So I drank, and she also gave water to the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, who Milcah bore him. I put a ring in her nose and bracelets on her arms. I bowed and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who led me in the right direction to choose the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now if you're loyal and faithful to my master, tell me. If not, tell me so I will know where I stand either way. Laban and Bethuel both responded, This is all the Lord's doing. We have nothing to say about it. Here is Rebekah right in front of you. Take her and go. She will be the wife of your master's son, just as the Lord said. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed low before the Lord. The servant brought out gold and silver jewelry and clothing and gave them to Rebekah. To her brother and to her mother he gave the finest gifts. He and the men with him ate and drank and spent the night. When they got up in the morning, the servant said, See me off to my master. Her brother and mother said, let the young woman stay with us not more than ten days, and after that she may go. But he said to them, Don't delay me. The Lord has made my trip successful. See me off so that I can go to my master. They said, Summon the young woman and let's ask her opinion. They called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. So they sent off their sister Rebekah, her nurse, Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah, saying to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of ten thousand. May your children possess their enemy cities. Rebekah and her young woman got up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac had come from the region of Beer Lahai Roy, 
and had settled in the arid southern plain. One evening, Isaac went out to inspect the pasture, and while staring, he saw camels approaching. Rebekah stared at Isaac. She got down from the camel and said to the servant, Who is this man walking through the pasture to meet us? The servant said, He's my master. So she took her headscarf and covered herself. The servant told Isaac everything that had happened. Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother Sarah's tent. He married Rebekah and loved her. So Isaac found comfort after his mother's death. Genesis 25 Abraham married another wife named Keturah. The children she bore him were Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan became the father of Sheba and Dedan. Dedan's sons were Asherim, Latushim, and Liamim. Midian's sons were Ephah, Epher, Enoch, Abida, and Aldea. All of these were Keturah's sons. Abraham gave everything he owned to Isaac. To the sons of Abraham's secondary wives, Abraham gave gifts and, while he was still living, sent them away from his son Isaac to land in the east. Abraham lived to the age of 175. Abraham took his last breath and died after living a good long life, a content old man, and he was placed with his ancestors. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave in Machpelah, which is in the field of Zohar's son Ephron the Hittite, near Mamre. Thus Abraham and his wife Sarah were both buried in the field Abraham had purchased from the Hittites. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac lived in Beer Lehay Roy. These are the descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's servant, bore for Abraham. These are the names of Ishmael's sons, by their names, and according to their birth order. Nebaioth, Ishmael's oldest son, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Naphish, and Kedema. These are Ishmael's sons. These are their names by their villages and their settlements. Twelve tribal leaders according to their tribes. Ishmael lived to the age of 137. He took his last breath and died and was placed with his ancestors. He established camps from Havilah to Shur, which is near Egypt on the road to Assyria. He died among all his brothers. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac was forty years old when he married Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel the Aramean, and the sister of Laban the Aramean, from Paddan Aram. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, since she was unable to have children. The Lord was moved by his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. But the boys pushed against each other inside of her, and she said, If this is what it's like, why did it happen to me? So she went to ask the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two different peoples will emerge from your body. One people will be stronger than the other. The older will serve the younger. When she reached the end of her pregnancy, she discovered that she had twins. The first came out red all over, clothed with hair, and she named him Esau. Immediately afterward, his brother came out, gripping Esau's heel, and she named him Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when they were born. When the young men grew up, Esau became an outdoorsman who knew how to hunt, and Jacob became a quiet man who stayed at home. Isaac loved Esau because he enjoyed eating game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was boiling stew, Esau came in from the field hungry and said to Jacob, I'm starving. Let me devour some of this red stuff. That's why his name is Edom. Jacob said, Sell me your birthright today. Esau said, Since I'm going to die anyway, what good is my birthright to me? Jacob said, Give me your word today. And he did. He sold his birthright to Jacob. So Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. He ate, drank, got up, and left, showing just how little he thought of his birthright. Genesis 26 When a famine gripped the land, a different one from the first famine that occurred in Abraham's time, Isaac set out toward Gerar and toward King Abimelech of the Philistines. The Lord appeared to him and said, Don't go down to Egypt, but settle temporarily in the land that I will show you. Stay in this land as an immigrant, and I will be with you and bless you, because I will give all of these lands to you and your descendants. 
I will keep my word which I gave to your father Abraham. I will give you as many descendants as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all of these lands. All of the nations of the earth will be blessed because of your descendants. I will do this because Abraham obeyed me and kept my orders, my commandments, my statutes, and my instructions. So Isaac lived in Gerar. When the men who lived there asked about his wife, he said, She's my sister, because he was afraid to say, My wife, thinking, The men who live there will kill me for Rebekah because she's very beautiful. After Isaac had lived there for some time, the Philistines' king Abimelech looked out his window and saw Isaac laughing together with his wife Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She's your wife, isn't she? How could you say she's my sister? Isaac responded, because I thought that I might be killed because of her. Abimelech said, What are you trying to do to us? Before long, one of the people would have slept with your wife, and you would have made us guilty. Abimelech gave orders to all of the people. Anyone who touches this man or his wife will be put to death. Isaac planted grain in that land and reaped one hundred shirim that year because the Lord had blessed him. Isaac grew richer and richer until he was extremely wealthy. He had livestock, both flocks and cattle, and many servants. As a result, the Philistines envied him. The Philistines closed up and filled with dirt all of the wells that his father's servants had dug during his father Abraham's lifetime. Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us, because you have become too powerful among us. So Isaac moved away from there, camped in the valley of Gerar, and lived there. Isaac dug out again the wells that were dug during the lifetime of his father Abraham. The Philistines had closed them up after Abraham's death. Isaac gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug wells in the valley and found a well there with fresh water. Isaac's shepherds argued with Gerar's shepherds, each claiming, This is our water. So Isaac named the well Esek, because they quarreled with him. They dug another well and argued about it, too, so he named it Sitna. He left there and dug another well, but they didn't argue about it, so he named it Rehoboth and said, Now the Lord has made an open space for us and has made us fertile in the land. Then he went up from Gerar to Beersheba. The Lord appeared to him that night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Don't be afraid, because I am with you. I will bless you, and I will give you many children for my servant Abraham's sake. So Isaac built an altar there and worshipped in the Lord's name. Isaac pitched his tent there, and his servants dug a well. But Abimelech set out toward him from Gerar, with Ahazath his ally, and Phicol the commander of his forces. Isaac said to him, Why have you come after me? You resented me and sent me away from you. They said, We now see that the Lord was with you. We propose that there be a formal agreement between us, and that we draw up a treaty with you. You must not treat us badly, since we haven't harmed you, and since we have treated you well at all times. Then we will send you away peacefully for you are now blessed by the Lord. Isaac prepared a banquet for them, and they ate and drank. They got up early in the morning, and they gave each other their word. Isaac sent them off, and they left peacefully. That day Isaac's servants informed him about the well that they had been digging, and said to him, We found water. He called it Sheba. Therefore the city's name has been Beersheba until today. When Esau was forty years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Basimath, daughter of Elan the Hittite. They made life very difficult for Isaac and Rebekah. Genesis chapter 27 When Isaac had grown old and his eyesight was failing, he summoned his older son Esau and said to him, My son? And Esau said, I'm here. He said, I'm old and don't know when I will die. So now take your hunting gear, your bow and quiver of arrows, go out to the field and hunt game for me. Make me the delicious food that I love, and bring it to me so I can eat. Then I can bless you before I die. Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau went out to the field to hunt game to bring back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I just heard your father saying to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and make me some delicious food so I can eat, and I will bless you in the Lord's presence before I die. Now, my son, listen to me, to what I am telling you to do. Go to the flock and get me two healthy young goats, so I can prepare them as the delicious food your father loves. You can bring it to your father, he will eat, and then he will bless you before he dies. Jacob said to his mother Rebekah, 
My brother Esau is a hairy man, but I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me and thinks I am making fun of him? I will be cursed instead of blessed. His mother said to him, Your curse will be on me, my son. Just listen to me. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother. And his mother made the delicious food that his father loved. Rebekah took her older son Esau's favorite clothes that were in the house with her, and she put them on her younger son Jacob. On his arms and smooth neck she put the hide of young goats, and the delicious food and the bread she had made she put into her son's hands. Jacob went to his father and said, My father. And he said, I'm here. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I'm Esau, your oldest son. I've made what you asked me to. Sit up and eat some of the game so you can bless me. Isaac said to his son, How could you find this so quickly, my son? He said, The Lord your God led me right to it. Isaac said to Jacob, Come here and let me touch you, my son. Are you my son Esau or not? So Jacob approached his father Isaac, and Isaac touched him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the arms are Esau's arms. Isaac didn't recognize him because his arms were hairy like Esau's arms, so he blessed him. Isaac said, Are you really my son Esau? And he said, I am. Isaac said, Bring some food here and let me eat some of my son's game so I can bless you. Jacob put it before him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. His father Isaac said to him, Come here and kiss me, my son. So he came close and kissed him. When Isaac smelled the scent of his clothes, he blessed him. See, the scent of my son is like the scent of the field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you showers from the sky, olive oil from the earth, plenty of grain, and new wine. May the nations serve you. May peoples bow down to you. Be the most powerful man among your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Those who curse you will be cursed, and those who bless you will be blessed. After Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and just as Jacob left his father Isaac, his brother Esau came back from his hunt. He too made some delicious food, brought it to his father, and said, Let my father sit up and eat from his son's game, so that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your oldest son, Esau. Isaac was so shocked that he trembled violently. He said, Who was the hunter just here with game? He brought me food, and I ate all of it before you came. I blessed him, and he will stay blessed. When Esau heard what his father said, he let out a loud, agonizing cry and wept bitterly. He said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. Isaac said, Your brother has already come deceitfully and has taken your blessing. Esau said, Isn't this why he's called Jacob? He's taken me twice now. He took my birthright, and now he's taken my blessing. He continued, Haven't you saved a blessing for me? Isaac replied to Esau, I've already made him more powerful than you, and I've made all of his brothers his servants. I've made him strong with grain and wine. What can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you really have only one blessing, father? Bless me too, my father. And Esau wept loudly. His father Isaac responded and said to him, Now you will make a home far away from the olive groves of the earth, far away from the showers of the sky above. You will live by your sword. You will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will tear away his harness from your neck. Esau was furious at Jacob because his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, When the period of mourning for the death of my father is over, I will kill my brother. Rebekah was told what her older son Esau was planning. So she summoned her younger son Jacob and said to him, Esau, your brother, is planning revenge. He plans to kill you. So now, my son, listen to me. Get up and escape to my brother Laban in Haran. Live with him for a short while until your brother's rage subsides, until your brother's anger at you goes away and he forgets what you did to him. Then I will send for you and bring you back from there. Why should I suffer the loss of both of you on one day? Rebekah then said to Isaac, I really loathe these Hittite women. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women, like the women of this land, why should I go on living? Well, family, beloved, obviously a whole lot happened in the four chapters we read today, which means that the best we can do is sort of take a 
45,000-foot view when discussing it, unless you want a two-hour episode, and I don't know that you want that or that I do. So I've decided to take just a closer look at a couple of verses from chapter 24 and a few from chapter 25. So let's talk about Genesis 24. Abraham sent the oldest servant of his household on a mission to find a wife for Isaac. Remember, Isaac is the son promised to Abraham and Sarah. And it's through Isaac and his descendants that God's promise will be fulfilled. Abraham and his family are living in Canaan. And Abraham did not want Isaac marrying a Canaanite woman. He wanted a bride from his home, Ur of the Chaldees, and from his family. To him, it was absolutely imperative that Isaac not have a Canaanite wife. Okay, so to our minds, the way that Abraham had his servant take the oath to carry out his orders seems strange. Let's read verses 2 through 4 again. Abraham said, Put your hand under my thigh. By the Lord, God of heaven and earth, give me your word that you won't choose a wife for my son from the Canaanite women among whom I live. Go to my land and my family and find a wife for my son Isaac there. So Abraham started off by saying, put your hand under my thigh. All right, let's, let's think about this. When we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in a courtroom, what do we do? We put our hand on the Bible. There was a time where this was more than just a formality. There was a time when placing your hand on this most sacred object meant something. Of course, to believers it still does. Why is the Bible considered sacred? Because it's the Word of God. The Bible represents God's truth, His promises to mankind. It contains the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the word testament, in case you didn't know it, means covenant or promise. Well, Abraham did not have a Bible upon which his servant could put his hand. Now, listen to what Bible commentator Adam Clark wrote about this passage. The person binding himself put his hand under the thigh of the person to whom he was about to be bound. That is, he put his hand on the part that bore the mark of circumcision, the sign of God's covenant. Our ideas of delicacy may revolt from the right used on this occasion, but when the nature of the covenant is considered, of which circumcision was the sign, we shall at once perceive that this right could not be used without producing sentiments of reverence and godly fear, as the contracting party must know that the God of this covenant was a consuming fire. So, does having this information cause the manner of taking the oath to make a bit more sense? And it also gives us another reason to be thankful that we do have the Bible now. All right, let's jump to chapter 25. The death of Sarah was recorded back in chapter 23. And here in chapter 25, Abraham remarries and has other sons through Keturah, his second wife. Before he dies, he gives all that he owns to Isaac, but he gives gifts to Keturah's sons and sends them away. There can be no question that Isaac is the one through whom God's covenant with Abraham will be fulfilled. Then Abraham died at the age of 175, and he's buried in the cave that he bought to bury Sarah in. Now full attention is turned to Isaac. Having married Rebekah, who was miraculously found in Ur of the Chaldees by Abraham's servant, two sons are born, Esau and Jacob. Now, during her pregnancy, Rebekah became concerned because it seemed that the two children within her were struggling. So she went to the Lord in prayer, and God said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two different peoples will emerge from your body. One people will be stronger than the other. The older will serve the younger. Well, in those days, the normal custom was for the eldest to receive the birthright and the youngest to serve the eldest. But God chose the youngest. And some might question God's choice. They might say, why would he do that? Is that fair? And then there's this. Long after both Esau and Jacob died, God spoke to Israel through the prophet Malachi. In Malachi chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, he said, Yet I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. And that's how it's translated in several different um, versions of the Bible. And a woman once said to the great 19th century preacher, Charles Spurgeon, I cannot understand why God should say that he hated Esau. Spurgeon replied, That is not my difficulty, madam. My trouble is to understand how God could love Jacob. Well, we'll get to Jacob in a moment. So why would God hate Esau, especially before he's even born? Well, actually, the word translated from the Hebrew hate 
is better translated rejected. And that is, in fact, how it is in today's translation that we read from the Common English Bible. God said, I I loved Jacob, but I rejected Esau. But why would God reject Esau? Well, in Genesis 26, 34, we read, When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Basimath, daughter of Elon the Hittite. They made life very difficult for Isaac and Rebekah. You see, Hittites were from Canaan, and Isaac's descendants were not to marry Canaanite women. So in marrying them, Esau went against what the will of God was. And then Hebrews 12:16 puts the final piece in the puzzle. Paul wrote there, Make sure that no one becomes sexually immoral or ungodly like Esau. He sold his inheritance as the oldest son for one meal. You see, God, being God, knew that Esau would be an immoral and ungodly man, even before he was born, and this is why he rejected Esau. Now, Jacob was not without his flaws, though. When he followed his older brother out of the womb, he was clutching Esau's heel, and that's how he got his name. Esau means heel catcher. So what you say? But in that day, a heel catcher meant con artist, swindler, trickster, scoundrel, It did not carry good connotations. And as we read today, he lived up to that name. Well, what did you think about today's reading? Do you have any questions or comments? Let me know. Call the LifeSpring Family Hotline at 951-732-8511. And if you're outside the U.S., put a plus one at the beginning of that number. You can also comment at comment.lifespringmedia.com or you can email me at steve at lifespringmedia.com. Tomorrow... Is History Tuesday. We'll read Judges 7 through 11. Today's executive producer is the believer from the North Country. This person sent in $303.99 with this note. Steve, I wanted to send this in Satoshis, but I frankly don't have the time to figure it all out. So I just sent you what I had in my fountain wallet from listening. This fiat donation at the time of sending it equates to 181818 Satoshis. So I thought that'd be a fun 18 with a palindrome mixed in. Anyway, congrats on 18. A believer from the North Country, thank you. God bless you. I appreciate that. That's an awesome amount. 181818 Satoshis, $303.99. I appreciate you. God bless you. And I have to say, if you had that many sats in your fountain wallet, that's a lot of listening you've been doing to podcasts. That's fantastic. So let that be a lesson to those of you that think you don't want to get into this. You can get paid real money for listening to podcasts using the Fountain app. You can download the Fountain app from fountain.fm. It's available on both Android and iOS. And Brother Paul of Seattle sent in a boostergram. He said, Steve, happy 18. And he sent in 500 sats using the Fountain app. Thank you, Brother Paul of Seattle. That's great. God bless you. Well, we had such a long show yesterday, and I had a tremendous amount of administrative stuff to do in the studio today, so I'm going to call it a show. Thanks to Sister Kirsty, Brother Sean of San Pedro, and Sister Denise for all the back office things they do. Appreciate you guys, you know that. And I want to thank the Believer from the North Country and Brother Paul of Seattle, both of those folks, for their donations today. If you're glad the LifeSpring Family Audio Bible is around, if you're happy to see it in your podcast app every day with a new episode, please do support it in proportion to the amount of value that you receive. Go to lifespringmedia.com support, pray about it, and then do as the Lord leads. Until tomorrow, may God bless you richly. Thank you for making me a part of your day. I don't take it for granted. My name is Steve Webb. Bye. The LifeSpring Media family of programs are made possible by the generous support of listeners like you. Thank you.